Lagoon is a game that I believe came out uh, last year on Gen Con. I remember when I was looking at games that were supposed to be released at Gen Con and games that I wanted to pick up at Gen Con, Lagoon was one of them. And then just so many things happened at Gen Con that I guess I forgot I ended up not picking up a copy. Uh, which I did uh, recently, last week. I picked up a copy from my friend, the local game store, and I gave it a try. Uh, I'll confess, one of the main reasons is because the art looks so stunning. The art is just unbelievable. I guess I'll have that shallow, I have that shallow aspect too. Um, but originally when I was interested in the game, when I was just reading about it before Gen Con 2014, the reason why I was interested in it was because it was a solitaire option. To me, that's always something attractive to a game that I can also play by myself. And I play many solitaire war games. I always, I'm always interested in finding games that have different engines, different ideas, and not strictly war games, but that I can still play by myself. Lagoon is uh, allegedly a fantasy game set in a world of druids that are manipulating energies and doing stuff. Uh, this description is a little generic because actually uh, when you look past the amazingly beautiful art the game feels a little generic and a little abstract. It's not all that thematic. It's about tokens called druids and they're getting other tokens, cold energy, and moving things around, and there are names that are slightly evocative, but you don't really get the sense that it's much of a story. At the core, this is an abstract game with incredibly attractive art. But before I go, I go ahead too much with my conclusions, let me show you how the game works and plays. The game depicts the time and the actions and the adventures of groups of druids that are trying to influence the balance of forces in this magical, mystical land which they themselves apparently are discovering as the game progresses. The land is uh, built by using these tiles here. They're double-sided, each represents a different terrain. And let's face it. These styles simply have some of the most stunning art that I've ever seen in any game. The, the, wow, I, I don't know what else to say. They, maybe a poet should, should review this game. We should have a bard, a minstrel singing songs about how amazing these styles are. They're also very thick and very durable, which is great. At the beginning of the game, you will place three such tiles on the board to form the initial area, and then you have a big bag in which you place these tiles, and yes, the tiles will be drawn randomly from the bag during the game. Each player has a team of druids, four of them are regular druids, and then you have the super duper elder, very expert druid called the Eldrid, and identified by that symbol there. Each druid is represented by a token which has two sides. One is the side that you use to indicate that the druid or Eldrid is ready to act, and the other one to indicate that the druid performed his action and is exhausted. At the beginning of your turn, you get to refresh three of your exhausted druids, but during the game, during the turn that follows that, you can use any and all of the druids that you have on the board. So you will, you're allowed to use more druids and you will be able to refresh the beginning of the following turn. Each player also gets a token, uh, such as this one, which is used to keep track of whether or not you have used a certain action in the game. Let me tell you about those actions. Well, you start the game with some of your druids on the board, in particular on areas that have a green area on top, and those are pretty much spawning points where you will place new druids that enter the board. When it is your turn, you can use your druids to perform actions. Usually when you're performing an action, you after you perform the action, you flip the druid to the other side to indicate the fact that the druid performed an action is now exhausted. A super basic action is that you can move one of your druid from the X in which it is to an adjacent one. Done. That's the move action. Pretty simple. You can summon new druids. You can exhaust one of your druids to summon another one from the uh, from your from your pool area. The uh, summoned the druid enters the game on the exhausted side and also enters one of the spawning points. 
and that is it. More interesting action is to explore, that is to draw new tiles from the bag and to expand the world. In order to explore, you need to have a druid that is ready to act. You declare the explore action, you draw a random tile, and then you simply get to place that tile adjacent to the to the tile in which your exploring druid is. Suppose that I'm exploring with that druid there, then I want to explore. I take this tile, I look at the two sides, and I choose one that I like. For example, I think I like this one. I put it there and you simply move your druid there. When you're exploring, you also gain a token of the corresponding color. As you can see, all, all terrain tiles have a symbol, or one of three possible symbols. They have technical terms, which are blue token, red token, and yellow token, also known as blue energy, red energy, and yellow energy. And it's a little technical, but try to bear with me. There are these tokens that represent that represent uh, energy that you can collect during the game. So when you explore a new area, uh, you get a token of the corresponding color. Why are you exploring and moving and doing all sorts of things? Uh, to, because you're trying to influence the balance of energy and forces in the, in this world. There are three energies that are fighting with one, with one another and they're called blue energy, red energy and yellow energy. And they influence each other in a rock, paper, scissor type of system. Yellow will always win against red, red against blue, and blue against yellow. So these energies don't like each other very much. And during the game you will side with one or more of them and you will try to make those win by removing the other ones. Yes, a very important action in the game, the one that you're trying to perform as often as possible, is calling the game to unravel, which simply means, it's a strange idea, you are destroying the tile in which you are. Are you destroying it? Are you removing it? The idea is that you need to produce enough energy to remove the tile from the board, uh, from the table. It gives me the sense that the druid is simply like cutting an area in the, in the land in which he is, rolling it up like a carpet and walking away with a piece of landscape. It's a little weird uh, thematically for me. But you want to do so for game mechanics purposes, as I'll explain later. In order to do so, as I said, you need to produce enough energy. You need to produce enough of the energy that defeats the energy of the X in which you are and that you want to remove. For example, suppose that I want to remove that um, that hex there. First, I need to have a druid there that performs the action of, of unraveling the terrain tile. Then in order to remove a, a yellow tile I need to produce three points of blue energy. Three is the number that you need to unravel a tile. So three red unravel a blue one, three yellow a red one and blue, yes three blue the yellow one. So I need to produce three such points of energy which I can do by using the energy in the sites in which I am. Each uh, of my druids can help, so each of my druid produces a point towards the reveling action based on the terrain in which it is. Right now I have two um, blue energy points that I can use to unravel that. Suppose that I had another druid here, then I simply have all of the energy that I need. But remember, as you go around the board, uh, as you explore, and also because of other game effects, you will gain tokens. So these tokens you can also spend. Suppose that I'm trying to unravel that site, then, and I only have these two druids in the right location, locations with the right energy, but I also have one of these in my pool, in the maple area, um, the my stockpile, then I simply spend it. I send it back to the bank. So between the two from the terrain and three tokens and one token, two and one is three, I produce enough energy and I walk away with a piece of land that I just stole and I hope nobody stops me. Nobody figures it out. 
Another thing is that you can use site actions. The sites have actions printed on them in the bottom half and some of the actions will force you to spend a druid and that is indicated by that symbol that tells you you need to flip a druid in order to perform the corresponding action. Some actions you need to flip a druid but not just anyone, you need to flip the eldrid as indicated by that little symbol there. You have symbols uh, such as this one, this symbol indicates that the action is triggered when you explore the site, that is when you enter the site. There are also uh, other other pieces of terrain of land with this symbol here which simply means it can happen at any time it is triggered automatically when the condition uh, described here applies so sometimes actually it is like this that gives you a choice sometimes the action is simply triggered automatically that symbol indicates that the text tells you when the action can be performed and um, let me just give you some uh, examples of what these actions are, like blast a dragon with the mighty power of the forest or something. No, not exactly. Um, it is just ways of manipulating the engine of druids that you have here, and it is a way of moving tiles around. Uh, for example, rearrange the invoking druid site and up to two sites adjacent to it so that it lies in any of the other's original position. There are many of that kind when you, where you can in fact move tiles around. Uh, other symbols may allow you to manipulate your stock of of tokens, when you spread the site you may discard a red or a yellow and if you do you move any unlocked site you occupy to any space. Once per turn to help you unravel a red area you may gain an additional element energy yellow from the site. Things like this, they're pretty abstract, they're pretty abstract things as the game is pretty abstract in nature to start with. So you're moving hexes or and or you're moving your druids so that you find the right configurations to produce the right type of energy to unravel the pieces of land that you want to unravel. The game continues until all all hexes have been produced, all the hexes that went in the bag have been used and at that point you score, uh, you, you tally points and you score points to determine who the winner is. Scoring points is kind of um, interesting. At the end of the game you will look at the board and there will be one energy that will dominate. Usually it is the one that is um, that, that, that is the highest number of tiles in it. Right now the blue energy is dominating. Three against one and one. If there is a tie then you use the usual rock paper scissor uh, mechanism to see which uh, symbol, which energy breaks the tie. So at the end, the yellow energy or blue energy or red energy will be the winning, the dominating energy. And that tells you what actually scores. Suppose that at the end of the game, the yellow energy is the winning one, is the dominating one. Then each seed, each token that you have collected and you still have in your area, in that energy is worth one point. Then you score points for each site that you unraveled that showed the energies that are not the nominating one, that are not the winning energy. My way of rationalizing this is that the idea is that you get rewarded because you removed the wrong, the losing energies and therefore the land rewards you. The land and the energy is very happy with you uh, because if you have a lot of these in your area you can demonstrate that you has, have helped making this one the dominating one. And you get points because indeed you did invest in the winning, in the winning energy. So manipulating the number of, uh, of uh, tiles of a certain color on the board is of key importance because that it really is what uh, tells you whether the resources that you have collected in the game are worth a lot and will score you a victory or are worth absolutely nothing. Another thing that I didn't mention but that is pretty important during the game is that your uh, druids are connected mystically to one another when it comes to using the actions of, 
of a site. So if you're using a site section, uh, you do not necessarily have to exhaust and use the Druid that is there. You need a Druid in a tile to use that action, but then you can exhaust another Druid that is available and is on the board in order to provide energy to that Druid to perform the action of the site. So as I said earlier, the game uh, is, is an abstract, <laughs> it really is an abstract, with some unusual components. It's almost like several games packed together. Well, these are mechanics that you do not often see in um, packed together in a single game. As for the idea of manipulating the board, moving things around, creating certain configurations, placing your tokens here and there, uh, to me that really is typical of, of abstract games. Uh, give me a second, you know what? Just something came to mind. As I was playing Lagoon, uh, I was reminded of a game that I played in the past. I haven't played in a while, come to think of it, but I like very much. And it's called Mountain of Inferno. It's a small game by Zeman Games. And as I was playing Lagoon, I got uh, to think about this game, which really is about creating a board with the cards. So look at this. In this video, you get two reviews for the price of zero, I guess. In this game, you will have a deck of cards and then you will place them on the board and you will form a growing board and you will move cards around using card effects, trying to form specific configurations on the board and then moving your tokens on the board to exploit the configurations that you create. Uh, Lagoon to me was kind of like the more developed version of Mountain of Inferno not necessarily a better version because Mountain of Inferno it's very intuitive, it's very simple to, to teach and to play and it plays very quick, a hand lasts like can last as short as like five minutes so you can just play a couple of hands, a couple of rounds until you reach a certain point, a certain score that you have agreed on previously Lagoon takes much more effort and I do not know that I get much more of a kick out of Lagoon than I get uh, out of Mountain of Inferno. Lagoon, the first time I played it, I liked it and I thought, okay, I liked it, but uh, it felt a little slow, a little laborious. I think it's a game that it takes a while before you get used to it. And then I played it again and my enjoyment didn't really increase as I expected it would. Let me clarify uh, and say a little something more about beginning to play the game. At the beginning, the game <clears throat> will be terribly slow because players have to become familiar with the effects that are printed. So we'll have a lot of, of the game will be spent by people staying at the board or reading the effects, going back to that effect. Now you move the tile so I don't remember where that effect that I wanted to to exploit ended up being. So you have a lot of that. People are reading, memorizing, and once you have read, say, six, seven effects, it's not just, oh great, I learned them, I learned the list. You will want to think about them and how to integrate them with one another and how to make them work uh, in an engine that also works well with the engine that you have to build around the cycling of your druids from the board to your stockpile and vice versa. So at the beginning between learning the effects and learning what the heck to do with the effects and how to use them effectively individually and how to integrate them and combine them, uh, I remember the first game being painfully slow. The second game wasn't nearly as slow, uh, but it still felt pretty dry. I guess that that is maybe when uh, the abstract nature of the game uh, really, really emerged. So it is not as a bad game. It's, it's a game that I can't exactly warm up to. Uh, I know other gamers have loved it immensely. And I think it has a lot of smart ideas. Uh, it doesn't much resemble uh, many other games that I have with the exception possibly of Mountain of Inferno. They're just original things here. Um, more effects, more ideas, more resources, more ways in which you can manipulate the board and what your druids can do. But at the core, somehow, uh, the game still felt pretty dry and pretty generic. Yes, I play very thematic, very immersive games, but I can also play some more abstract games. Somehow it felt like, for an abstract game, that didn't really uh, 
warm me up with its theme or a narrative. For an abstract game, it felt like almost there were too many, too many layers. It almost felt like like a clockwork with just a couple of more cogs that are necessary. A machine with a little too many buttons compared to to the work that the machine produces. So um, a game that if I have to think about it with a cold mind and say that's some, some some interesting design but a lot of interesting ideas as for the execution the fun experience of playing it is one that i didn't find all that uh, all that appealing so there are many things that you have to do in order to scare to to score uh, many interesting things the scoring system is something that uh, i have mixed feelings about I think it's it's interesting and in that you do not know exactly what is going to score until the very end. Uh, there may be a powerful fights there in order to be able to unravel that tile that tips the balance of the world. But precisely because of this, sometimes things will feel a little arbitrary. You will feel that uh, two players that uh, work very hard and played very well and consistently well at the end um, may see their game being resolved by the flip of a single tile that upsets the balance and gives victory to uh, one of them leaving the other one with a bunch of completely worthless tiles that are not going to score at the end. Um, this is my assessment of Lagoon. As you can see it's hard for me to give you like just a synthesis because the game doesn't feel very synthetic to start with. It feels pretty um, dispersive. There is an economic engine, there is a spa spatial element, uh, there are uh, interactions uh, that, can, that are indirect uh, in many cases but they're can still be pretty much in your face take that type of thing when you're destroying the obvious strategy that the opponent is trying to implement when you remove their droids from the board it's not like you're attacking them with laser bolts or stuff like that but it's clear when there are times in which you're directly affecting the opponent uh, so there still is a confrontational element to it um, it looks great it looks beautiful it feels a little too dry for my taste. I don't feel like saying like it's a good game or a bad game. I think it is an interesting design uh, with a lot of interesting ideas. Definitely an original design. Probably don't, just not one that is for me.